Up through World War II, it was the family-owned businesses that employed most of the people in the United States. And when someone like Rupert Murdoch inherited a newspaper from his father in Australia and then parlayed that into buying the next newspaper and the next newspaper. So now he owns billions of dollars worth of communications, publishing, newspapers, television, so forth. He did not produce any jobs, and he did not increase... Rupert Murdoch didn't produce any jobs? No. No. He, he in almost all cases, Murdoch cut staff for savings so that he could overcome the indebtedness faster. Um, this is one of the reasons why we have more unemployment at this moment across the country, not m blaming Rupert, Rupert Murdoch, but, but this, this monopolization of wealth and power has not increased employment. Okay. Um, let's take this, yeah. just take employment itself. Yes. Over the years, in the last hundred years, we still have um, most people who want to work, except for right now, we're in a major recession with nearly 10% unemployment. But for all of these years, with all of these large companies mm -hmm. taking over, what we've observed is that um, the unemployment rates have not uh, increased. They've stayed relatively low, that there's new jobs created every day, that is, um, capital went onto the farms and people moved out of the really unpleasant jobs. Working on a farm, as much as it's kind of um, glamorized in the modern media, it wasn't a pleasant job. There's a lot of risk associated with running a farm because you could have a bad year and a good year. And people were happy to get out of agriculture. Um, and so um, it's, it's hard to see how, how you're kind of blaming modern large businesses for unemployment when we don't, haven't had it. And we've had tremendous job creation in this country compared to other countries. Well, I, I, I see some of the truth in what you say, especially in the whole area of the rural area and the development of our cities um, as being an important part of it. But the unemployment levels in this country have remained unusually high for more than 100 years. No, in the wrong. black community, oh, well, that's in the point. Indian community, in the Hispanic community, among the poor whites of Appalachia. To to you attribute and, that? And, that structural poverty, structural economic um, injustice in various forms, and a refusal of either government or big business or chambers of commerces to work to allow folk to have access to work that can be meaningful to them and gives them a sense of responsibility and participation in society. Uh, certain kinds of urban, suburban unemployment have, uh, have not fundamentally changed in decades to my own knowledge. And well, one one of the things we know is that, you know, there's a lot of social programs, like in 1965, the whole war on poverty. And so there's a lot yes. of social programs. And what that does is it puts a huge marginal tax rate on poor people. What that means is that if you're poor and you start to get more money, you lose services and stuff. And so it, it is, we are sending the wrong signals to people in the inner city. And by, by putting things in like minimum wages that makes it hard for inner, inner city young men and women to get jobs, I think those things have really hurt the poor uh, But, but I don't think that's been because of developing a social fabric that helps people. That is what any, any society that is civilized is going to be engaged in helping its children and young people to move so that they can have access to life. Okay, so what would you do to, if you could do one thing, you know, to improve opportunities for children in the inner city today, what would be the one thing you would want to do? Well, I don't want to get this on just a business and a notion of the inner city, because let's, let's recognize that, that a great range of capitalism in the United States is what I call plantation capitalism. It was a 250 year period where we had plantations and m my ancestors were slaves in those plant for 250 years. And the theory about that is very important. The theory is that certain human beings are not human beings and are property. Well, I now, I maintain that I can go through the business pages 
and show you in Los Angeles, Los Angeles Times, how the theory that people do not matter will be found in the way in which capitalism operates today in a variety of places, in a variety of companies. The, the whole business that was a development of the 40s and 50s in the United States, that a company participates through Social Security and health care in the well-being, and the government participates so that it's a, a partnership of responsibility, the person, the corporation, the employer, the, co the, co the public, that has been obliterated and is being obliterated, which in my judgment makes our society increasingly a robber and rapacious society and not a civilized society. Um, you have one company, Kmart, where the CEO made $23 million um, over two years where they went through bankruptcy, mm -hmm. where he actually laid off 22,000 employees. And then you also had um, the Walmart, the CEO of Walmart making $17 million in the same year his company had a lot of the problems with they were forcing workers to work overtime and things like that, where how do you kind of separate greed from capitalism? I'd like to get to you, Mr. Varney. Right, I would say that um, if you didn't have a really good um, chief executive officer, you would have lost even more jobs. And that if you were to leave it up to all the people who work at Walmart and they were gonna get to vote on who should be their chief executive officer, they would vote on paying somebody a lot of money because the decisions that the executive makes have implications for everyone in the company. No one in the company, I can't imagine if they, if they took a vote, of, you know, they said to all the Walmart workers, you know, we could save a fortune, we're just going to hire Professor Swarney to run Walmart because she'll do it for like a million dollars. Um, it would not be in their interest. The workers would be in sad shape if they couldn't hire someone who had the kind of expertise to make the kinds of decisions that you have to make. And then you but actually, I have, I have, well, but I have, second. okay, sorry. You actually gave me a specific example of um, a company that did try to hire a CEO for less money and they weren't able to do it. Can you elaborate on that? So the story is of Ben and Jerry's, you know, the ice cream company. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. So they really wanted to just have, they wanted there to yeah. be a ratio of seven to one, I think, or five to one of the highest earnings to the lowest full-time earnings. And when they were trying to expand internationally, they were looking for a new executive. Um, they had to give up because they could hire someone cheap, but they wouldn't get someone with the expertise. You got to remember that this person is making decisions that have tremendous, you know, uh, implications for the company and if you if you don't pay somebody if you don't hire someone who has the skills to do it you're not gonna get good outcomes yeah but you're 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 romanticizing it seems to me very clearly many facets of big business in the United States that have helped to create the collapse that we have the the people who have uh, the mall uh, what is it Maldef who Used the Ponza scheme to rob billions of, of, of dollars. Well, out he's of not representative money. of most people in the United States. But Lieb That's why he Lieb was in the newspaper. Brothers, AEG, uh, yeah. any number of these companies. Okay, I remember, for an example, when American Bank of America proceeded to buy up banks to become now whatever <coughs> one of the five largest right. banks in the country, all over the nation. I remember very clearly as they merged and merged the business paper, the newspaper's reports and the business pages, how they said at that time, and this is now a good 20 years ago when that, when that was, when they were in the height of it maybe, I, I've not followed it that much since, but they said among other things that we're cutting staff. If I recall correctly, they said across the country they were going to cut 75,000 staff. They, were go they said that by, in 15 or 20 years, 75 to 80 percent of our employees will be temp employees. That is, people for whom we have no obligation, who must make an individual contract with us. They must care for all their own business, all their own stuff. So that created a whole level of instability in the United States and the economy. And I happen to think that all of that is rooted in a spiritual understanding of people, an understanding of I'm a person of power and greed, and I do have, have no responsibility for living in the society or in the world to other human beings. I'm not connected to the human family. 
And I happen to think that that's, that's a part of what I've seen happen in my lifetime in the United States.